Hi Floss Tube, it's Stephanie, Miss Ozo oh Crafty. Welcome back. And first of all, I just want to say thank you everyone who left such nice comments and everyone who subscribed. You really make me feel like welcome and I'm so happy that I decided to start making videos and I hope I can get to know some of you uh, better and maybe we'll even uh, see each other in real life one day. <laughs> so I thought today I'd start off with the Know Your Needleworker tag. And I have a few questions on my phone, so I'll be looking at that. <laughs> so the first question is, where do you live? And I live in the Washington, D.C. metro area, which is mid-Atlantic of uh, the United States of America. And I live in suburbia in a neighborhood called Camelot. <laughs> no joke. Myth and magic, all that. <laughs> and uh, it's a, a really nice place neighborhood here, like uh, the kind of place where kids play outdoors and neighbors help each other out and uh, we really like living here. We moved, we bought our house in 2012. So let's see, second question is what do you do for a living? I am a stay-at-home mom. I used to work in grants management for a medical school doing like uh, financial projections and accounting and some HR type stuff and that was uh, you know, a good job and everything, but uh, I didn't go back after maternity leave. The cost of daycare around here is really high, so I wasn't really going to uh, make out very well continuing working after paying for daycare, and uh, we were just weren't keen on the idea of daycare anyway. So it's a uh, being a stay-at-home mom is really nice, I have to say. I mean, it's an adjustment. But I definitely have more time to, you know, stitch and pursue my other hobbies than I would if I were working, especially with a, a kid. So it's, you know, different, but uh, all in all, it's a good thing. And I'll probably go back to work at some point, but right now I'm really enjoying the uh, stay-at-home mom thing. So the third question is, do you have any children? Well, yeah, I just mentioned that. I have one son, his name is Oliver, and he's almost two. He'll be two next week. So let's see, number four, do you have any pets? The answer to that is no. I, uh, I never had any pets growing up because my mom was allergic to like animal uh, fur and stuff. So, and then when I got older, I was just, well, never really was used to having animals around and I like to uh, travel a lot. So it just seemed like an expense and a responsibility that I wasn't really uh, ready for. That's not to say that I, I don't like animals. I mean, I do like animals all right. And if, for example, if Oliver wanted a dog or something and he were old enough to take care of it, you know, at least primarily, take primary responsibility for it, that would be okay with me. So let's see, number five. Other hobbies besides stitching. Okay, um, I have quite a few. <laughs> um, knit sewing. I mean, that's where the so crafty thing comes from. I learned how to sew when I was like 14 and I started like sewing pretty much my entire wardrobe. I had this constant desire for new clothes and I couldn't afford to buy them all the time but I could afford to sew them so <laughs> that's what I did. And I've sewn like all sorts of like home deck stuff like those curtains behind me that you see. Those are mine. <laughs> I've, this house has like tons of like big windows and I've um, you know made window treatments for a lot of the windows because either we needed them or what was there before was just like horrifying. We had this thing in our living room that looked like it came out of a funeral parlor circa like 1965. It was just awful. So I had to get rid of that. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, moving on. Oh yeah, other hobbies. So knitting. Um, I learned how to knit in 2002 and I was a crazy prolific knitter for a while. Primarily I would knit sweaters. I've knit like tons and tons of sweaters and accessories, you know, like hats and scarves and mittens and stuff like that. Um, but when we um, bought this house in 2012, we had to like pack up all our stuff and move, right? And I realized, oh my gosh, I have so many sweaters and so much yarn. I really don't need any more sweaters. So knitting is not really doesn't hold the same appeal for me as it used to, although I do still have a huge yarn stash, so I probably need to <laughs> get back to it someday or at least um, de-stash my yarn. I do I do really love it though. It's, it's hard to think about letting it go. And then other than that, um, 
I, uh, I cook and I bake, I decorate cakes, and I am uh, a home improver of the DIY uh, style. I, I will do pretty much any, I will try anything <laughs> to improve my house, and it usually works out um, pretty well in the end, although it typically takes longer and, and costs more than I would anticipate in the beginning. <laughs> and other than that, uh, I love to travel. Traveling is like so much fun for me. I love to like go far flung places and have really like active vacations where I really see the see the land and meet people and try the food and everything. I'm not really the type of person who likes to lie on the beach or whatever. Like I want to be like on the go doing stuff. So the last big vacation we took was to England, and that was in uh, 2013, and it was amazing. We flew into London, spent a few days there. And then we rented a uh, car and drove around the country. Not the whole country, but like sort of the, the northern half of it. And it was so much fun. I would love to go back to England one day. Let's see. All right, moving on. We've got question number um, six. What is your favorite movie? Well, that's a hard one. Um, let's see. I really like uh, dark comedy, so like Gross Point Blank, that's like one of my favorites with John Cusack, I think that's just so funny. My favorite uh, Disney movie is uh, Sleeping Beauty, I just love Sleeping Beauty. And uh, let's see, what else? Donnie Darko, I love Donnie Darko with uh, a young uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, it's a really good movie, sort of like a, a cult favorite now, I mean not for everybody, but uh, I really like it, and see, Sense and Sensibility with uh, Emma Thompson and Alan Rickman, that's a really good movie. That one makes me cry, and most movies don't make me cry, so <laughs> um, I think that's really good. And what else? How about, um, oh, I guess that's about it. Let's see, favorite TV show? Well, I don't, uh, we're cord cutters, we don't have cable, so... But uh, I do watch TV. I watch Netflix and I watch like Amazon Prime and stuff like that. And of course I watch stuff on like DVD and Blu-ray. So my favorite current TV show is Outlander from the uh, Stars Network. Really good show. And uh, the, uh, the actors are, well, the guy who plays Jamie is like easy on the eyes, let's say. <laughs> so it's certainly uh, not a hardship to watch that show, but it's a very like mature show with like a lot of um, violence and sex and language. So it's definitely not exactly family entertainment. And let's see what else. How about um, Jessica Jones? That's another good one that I've enjoyed recently. And I've also been watching this show um, on Netflix called uh, Broad Church. Another one on Netflix that I like is Longmire, which is like a Western sort of like a mystery western show. Broad Church is like a mystery too, but it's like more contemporary. And then uh, other ones are would be like True Blood I like and Moonlight, which is like, which is canceled. It's like a vampire show. And Veronica Mars, that is like one of the best TV shows ever in my opinion. Really love Veronica Mars. And uh, Oh yeah, Merlin. That's a good show. It's a, I think it might be BBC. I don't know. That one's canceled, but it, there's many seasons of it, and it's a really good show about like the King Arthur tales. And that one is family friendly. So, let's see. Uh, number eight, favorite book. That's a tough one too. I love to read. I mean, I read a ton. Not so much since my son was born, just because it's hard to really sink in yourself into a good book when you're running after a toddler all day, but uh, some of the books that I've really enjoyed, well, my all-time favorite is probably Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I just, I love that book. And back to, like, the, the TV movie thing, the, the Pride and Prejudice miniseries by the BBC, so good. Colin Firth is Darcy. I mean, isn't that just enough to, like, check it out? <laughs> and uh, other books... I really like um, The Discovery of Witches by uh, Deborah Harkness. It's like a trilogy. 
and uh, all three of them are, are pretty good. And uh, Harry Potter, I enjoy, like the Harry Potter books. And the Magicians as well, which is sort of like, I mean, people say it's like a grown-up Harry Potter, which is kind of true in a way, but that sort of misses the mark because the Magicians is just like a much more mature tale that just sort of like, it covers a lot more themes than Harry Potter. Harry Potter is more like a straightforward, like good versus evil thing, but the, the Magicians is, is more than that. So, oh yeah, and uh, The Air Affair by Jasper Ford, that's like, that's the first in this series, and they're like, they're, that's kind of like books about books. It's hard to explain, it's a very meta thing, but if you love books, uh, you'll probably like The Air Affair. <laughs> and then favorite music, uh, I enjoy a lot of stuff. Um, there aren't really, really genres that I don't like, but... Recently, I, I really like uh, Bruno Mars, and some of uh, Taylor Swift's new stuff, like her, her pop stuff, I like. Some of my old favorites are uh, like electronic music. I love Faithless and uh, Groove Armada. I guess those are both uh, Brit bands, like house bands. And um, Great Big Sea, they're like a, a folk rock um, band from Newfoundland. And they're great. I've seen them in concert. They're uh, they're pretty amazing. And uh, singer songwriter thing. I like uh, Sarah McLaughlin. I like Chris Isaac. And Coldplay. I like Coldplay. One Republic. I guess those are REM. Those are most of my favorites. And then the last one. Describe yourself in one word. Uh, I guess that would be uh, logical. My husband claims that I'm a Vulcan, if uh, any of you are Star Trek fans, I guess you would <laughs> know what that means, but I am a pretty like logical person, I think things through, I am pretty uh, precise about what I say and who I say it to, and I'm not terribly emotional, although I am more emotional since my son was born. I don't know why, but it's just things that... Uh, I used to just think we're kind of funny. Now they, like, get me. <laughs> so maybe I'll go back to my stoic self when he's a bit older. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm an introvert, and I sort of uh, need my alone time to uh, recharge. But uh, I do enjoy, you know, like, going out and meeting people and stuff. So I, uh, according to the Myers-Briggs, uh, I'm an INT, uh, so if, if any of you are familiar with that, so that's introvert, um, thinking, perceiving, and gosh, I can't remember the, uh, the fourth one, but uh, yeah, okay, so <laughs> that's me. All right, so now you, you know your needle worker, <laughs> and uh, we'll get into my, my whips. So... A few days after my last video, I started a new project, and that was January 23rd that I started it. And it's The uh, Air Goddess by uh, Joan Elliott. I will insert a pic. And here is my whip. So I'm stitching this on uh, 32 count Ariel Belfast by Picture This Plus, and this is sort of like the bottom half of the chart. So I worked on her for a week, and I was pretty close to finishing the uh, the bottom half. So I kept her on the scroll bars another day and finished it off. And there's, I mean, of course, there's beads and there's like Krennic, but this is the regular DMC. I really love the colors in this piece. The, well, the wrap is sort of like gr shades of greenish gray, and then the main skirt is like uh, periwinkle colors, and the underskirts are like uh, buttery uh, white, yellow kind of thing. And I just, I love her feet. She's like on point, like a ballet dancer. She's like dancing in the sky. And I love how the um, 
underskirts have like a sort of translucent effect and you can see her her leg especially her back leg like under a, a hint of it from under the uh, the white area and this is also a, an easy pattern to stitch like most Joan Elliott's it doesn't use like 10 billion colors and the charts easy to follow so it's easy to just sort of like you know do cross-country stitching and make a lot of progress so I really uh I want to do the whole series, and my favorite is Earth, but my husband suggested I start, uh, I tackle them alphabetically. There's four in all, so that seemed like a good idea, and now that I'm working on air, I really love her. I mean, she's just, I love the colors, and I, I just, I'm really excited about this project, so I'm hoping to uh, work on it a lot in the first half of the year and hopefully finish her um, by July. So, whips. Right after the video, I worked on the um, Midsummer Night Fairy. So she was almost done except for beading. So I started beading. You can see some of those beads. There are quite a few. And there was a little bit of cross stitching that was missing. So I filled that in. And Unfortunately, I, I ran out of beads, like the, the gold beads, the ones that are looping across her dress. I, um, I, you need two packages, I only bought one. So I ran out and at the time, there was a blizzard dumping 30 inches of snow in my house. <laughs> yeah, so that's the other thing. Since the last video, it's been kind of uh, crazy around here. We had a, a historic snowstorm, I mean, 30 inches, that's like, Point, uh, three quarters of a meter for those of you, the majority of the world that doesn't use the yards and stuff or feet. And it was just crazy. I've never seen that much snow in my life. I hope to never again. <laughs> so it was a lot of shoveling. And after we finally like finished all the shoveling, I got sick with like some sort of like sinus type thing. And it, it kind of sucked, but uh, it wasn't too bad. And I'm all better now. It didn't stop me from stitching, so that's always a good thing. And then after um, Midsummer Night Fairy and Air Goddess, I picked up Celtic Christmas, and that was the same thing. Needed to do a little bit more cross stitching and beading. I'll insert a pic of how it looked before. And I finished the um, top, this, uh, this part here, this corner, needed more stitching, so I finished that. And I did her, her candles. I had to alter the chart a little bit because I stitched this on cream and the candles as charted would sort of disappear into the fabric, so I, I used slightly darker tones for those candles. And I started the beading from the bottom up lots of beads on this project. Normally I attach beads with a um, half cross using two um, strands of DMC floss to match the fabric. When I started beading I would use different DMC threads to match the beads but that was just like crazy making especially if you have I mean, I would do that if I were just using beads of one or two colors, but when you're using like four or five different beads, it's so much easier just to go with a, a floss that matches the fabric. And honestly, like, if you look really close, you might be able to see the floss attaching some of my beads, but this thing is going to be framed on the wall, and you will never be able to, like, really see that floss, so. <laughs> anyway, so I, I beaded and beaded and beaded, and then I ran out of the uh, the gold beads 557 so what's left to bead would be the letters um, there are a few beads on the letters but they need more and then the this side over here I need more beads in the, the geometric section but yeah so back to the the attachment method so in the dress I attach the beads diagonally like I, I normally would like in the areas of solid stitching but in the the geometric pattern area. I tried that and I just, I didn't like it. I don't know because maybe it's because the 
the patterns are so like, you know, geometric or, or what, but I thought they looked better attached straight up and down. So I did that, you know, I put it in with a half cross and then brought the um, thread back up as if I was going to make a second cross for a full cross stitch. And then on the second pass, um, put it back through the bead before I sink it back in, into the fabric on the fourth corner. So that what that does is it basically forces the uh, bead to stand up straight. So I have ordered more beads, um, both for this project and for <laughs> Midsummer Night Fairy. And this project, I think maybe like two hour, two more hours will do it. So I'm hoping to uh, finish her really soon, like as soon as those beads arrive, basically. Midsummer Night Fairy will take a bit more, um, but uh, certainly like a day or two, uh, day or two's worth effort would be enough. I also need to do a bit more back stitching on that piece, maybe even a bit more cross stitching. Okay, and then one more whip. This is Love with a capital L by Papillon Creations. I will show you the, the pattern. It's here. It's basically the, um, the biblical verse from 1 Corinthians. And I started this project January, like the 16th maybe. So I'll insert a pic of what it looked like before. And here is what I've done this time. So, get this better, okay. Let me try some foam core behind this. Oh yeah, that's better. Now you can see it better. So the, the fabric's pretty cool. It's like this, um, it has sort of a, a hand dyed effect, but only on one side. I guess it's printed. It's called Vintage um, Smoky White. I got it from 123 Stitch. It's 25 count fabric. So I'm using Gloriana Silk. I'll show you my threads. So the pattern calls for two colors and then possibly a third to do the um, big capital L, which is here, this big L up here at the top corner. So the colors that I got are, let's try this, the white again. So this is crimson and Here is pumpkin. So when I started stitching with those colors, I didn't like how the the P and K, which are here, the P and the K, I didn't like how they looked in the pumpkin. I guess when you're stitching with just one um, ply of, of floss like I am, I, it just came out too pale. So I decided I needed another color and I did order that, so I got Gloriana Copper, which is this one. So I used the copper, I frogged the P and the K, and frogging one, you know, one over one full frost on 25 count, especially silk, is not much fun. I kind of had to like destroy the thread to get it out of there. But I redid it with the copper, and I did all like the first letters of the text with copper. But I'm still using the, the pumpkin for the border and all the decorative elements, because I do really like how it looks there. So it's coming along. This is my focus project for February. I'm doing it as part of the Love Stitch Along in uh, Stitch Mania. So I'm hoping to finish um, a little bit more. I mean, I want to get over to the um, the other side on this level, which would basically be like the top half of the chart, although I won't be half done at that point because obviously I still need to do the big L at the top left corner. And also I'm going to add some additional um, 
stuck to the bottom about the, our wedding details. You get like a personalized sampler. But uh, I think I should be able to finish this project this year. Honestly, it's not as much work as I thought. I mean, the chart is like uh, 12 pages long. So I was like, oh my gosh, when I, I bought the pattern. And I saw how long the chart was. And then I realized what the stitch count was. So the stitch count is 260 by 434. So that was sort of my impetus for doing it on 25 count fabric. So it didn't come out huge in the end. And I was nervous about that because I tried a long time ago doing my uh, page chart on 25 count. It just, it did not work out for me. I tried doing it like they suggested, two over one full cross, and it was just like a nightmare, too much thread. It was really hard to like punch the needle through the fabric, but this works out great. I mean, one over one full cross is fine. I'm not sure how it would be for a full coverage. I'd have to test it out, um, but... Yeah, I mean, it's not that hard to see either, the 25 count. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. All right, so that's it for whips. And I do have a little bit of haul to share. So, like I mentioned last time, I ordered from Needlecraft Corner, and I got this, you know, the, pump, the uh, copper floss, which I already showed you. And I got more of this crimson as well. And what else did I get from her? Let's see. I got some treasures. Uh, not too exciting. I mean, little, like, bicorns. And more little, like, blink. These are for the uh, Mirabilia reindeer. And I got some Krennic. And number four braid in this like pretty uh, purple color. It's number 3533. This is for Air Goddess. So, and then I ordered from, I think it's called Crazy Annie's Stitching Shop. It's on Bonanza, so it's a bit of a different like thing. What you do is you, you populate your cart and then you don't actually pay for it at the time. Like she'll send you like an email that says, okay, this is how much it's gonna cost and then you pay, pay for it. But here we go. So this is the August uh, Peridot Fairy. And I agreed to stitch this for my sister. She recently started cross stitching, but I don't think she quite feels ready to uh, pick up a, a Mirabilia yet. So, and her birthday is in August. So I agreed to do this, but uh, on no particular timetable. It's a pretty big pattern, bigger than I thought at first. It's 198 by 230 stitches. So, and I don't really have any appropriate fabric for it. I think she wants like a purple and green sort of like modeled hand dyed fabric. So I'll be on the lookout for it. I do have a few ideas, but uh, I haven't uh, acquired it yet. And then, also from Annie, I got this Erica Michaels pattern called Ask, Seek, and Knock. Let me take it out of the plastic. There we go. So it has this really cool door and some patterns and keys and stuff. This is meant to be stitched on 40 count silk gauze. And if you do that, it works out to be 1.7 inches wide by 4.6 inches tall. And I, the gauze came with the chart. I looked at it and I was like, no way. <laughs> I'm just not interested in stitching on 40 count gauze, nor am I interested in having a FO that's just so darn small. I would, you know, probably stitch this on 32 or 36 count over two, and it will be like a more normal size, like 8 by 10 or something like that. And then I got this little mini uh, Mill Hill kit. It's called Winter Holiday. And it's like a little gingerbread house. I just thought it was really cute. And it was like, it was cheap. So, yeah. These Mill Hill kits are a lot of fun. I did one last year. Gabrielle the Angel. I should have showed 
that to you in my last video, but uh, I think actually, I guess I was in the process of packing up the Christmas stuff at the time, so I forgot about it, but next year. And then I got a couple patterns off uh, Facebook. So this is called Retro Robots and Rockets. It's like ripped out of a magazine, so. Go. I'm having sort of a hard time lining it up, but it's like these cool retro uh, robots by Diane Machen. Machen, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But they they have like cool sayings. Like one of them says, "Space stand model four, touchscreen controls, atomic powered, interchangeable tools." And then there's another one that says. Quasar cruiser, rear thrusters, forward face, facing forward radar, ride in style. So I'm thinking about doing these for my, my son. So one of his favorite books is uh, There's No Place Like Space with the Cat in the Hat. So I'm thinking when he's a little bit older and we redo his room, um, you know, big boy style, we might do a space theme. Right now it's Enchanted Forest. And I do have a few pieces in there which... I will try to show at some point. I've honestly, I've got cross stitch all over the house, so um, I will try to show those off, but sort of a, a staggered, you know, basis because it's just I'm not going to take everything off the walls at one one time. Okay, so another one from Facebook. This is the Vintage Valentine by Angela uh, Pullen Atherton. It says be mine. Really cute uh, Cupid there. I thought based on the online picture, I thought it was going to be like more like pink, you know, like traditional Valentine colors, but I actually really like this, that it's not, you know, pink. <laughs> so that's, uh, this one's pretty big, I think. This one, let's see the stitch count. It is... 123 by 138, not that big, I guess. But uh, I think he's cute. And I do want to stitch more Valentine's Day. So that's the other part of my haul. I have some electronic patterns that I bought. One of them is Butterfly Heart, and that was by uh, X Stitch Squared on Etsy. I will insert a pic. Here. And then I also got from her Godspeed. I will insert a pic. This one coordinates with this other um, piece called, uh, oh man, I'm blanking. It's like a, a lady knighting somebody. And I have that one by uh, Artisy, I think. So. I would like to stitch both of them up, um, but who knows, <laughs> they're big charts. <laughs> Maybe one day. And then, what else did I get? Oh yeah, I got something from uh, CS Designs by Leah on Artfire. This was enabled by another floss tuber. I saw her stitching these uh, Disney princesses. And I was like, ooh, I like that shot. So <laughs> I tracked it down and I will insert a picture here. And finally, from, sorry about that, my camera just blanked out, but uh, like I was saying, another one from Etsy, I got this uh, happy chart, it's a happy minion, and I'm going to stitch this for a uh, mystery box for the Mirabilia Minions Retreat, which is coming up in April in Cincinnati, and uh, one of the items for the box is minion themed, so... I'm going to stitch this chart and try to finish it as a uh, flat fold, which I've never done before, but uh, there are some good tutorials out there, so I think it'll be a fun project, and hopefully it'll stitch up pretty quick. It doesn't involve that many colors. So finally, I'd like to share some of my FOs that I have that uh, are yet to be framed. The most recent one is uh, Mirabilia 
Mediterranean mermaid. Get her out of the book. Here she is. She is stitched on um, 32 counts, or sorry, 30 count. I'm having a hard time with this board. It's just like, it's too big or something. She stitched on 30 count blue jeans linen by uh, Weeks Dye Works, and I did modify her hair. As charted, it's mostly like, just like a flat dark brown with some blue patches and I I didn't like the blue patches and plus I wanted a blonde mermaid so I kind of wonder like what's up with the mirror mermaids like almost all of them are brunettes and I just wanted a little variety in my collection so I couldn't really do a straight conversion because like I said it was like 95% just one color so if I convert it, it would still be, you know, just 95% whatever other color, and I thought it would look flat. So what I did is I drew, like, I made a little sketch of, like, the general shape of her hair, and then I divided in, it into sections, like locks of hair. And then what I did was I recreated the chart on some graph paper, the, the hair section, which was kind of a, a painstaking process, but... And um, I divided the uh, my new chart into lots of sections, like locks of hair, based on my original sketch. And then I picked four DMC colors. Okay, sorry, it's dark now, but I was trying to edit my video and I lost a bunch of footage. So I'm going to uh, try to recreate it. My second FO is another Meobilia pattern that I finished last year. It's called Petal Fairy. It's stitched on 32 count opalescent Lugana in the Ametrine colorway by Silk Weaver. And the color's not really coming up very well. It is quite pink in real life, the fabric. So this pattern, it has a lot of stitching but not much beading. So if you wanted to try like your first Meobelia, this this one might be a good choice if you're a little bit uh, uncertain about beading. So I do have a frame for her, and I'll frame her uh, probably pretty soon. I'm thinking that uh, there were a few comments on my last video about my DIY framing. So next time I do framing, I will make some video and do some, uh, you know, talk about it a little bit. I tend to sort of frame like... Um, in groups, you know, because there is like a certain amount of setup involved. Like I have to take out my mat cutter and, you know, it kind of like takes over my craft room for a while. So let's see. Other FOs. I have the, uh, the Rose Fairy. This is a chart by DMC. They were um, published in uh, England and there's a bunch of them, all adapted from the uh, artwork of Cicely Mary Barker. And this is stitched on 36 count Edinburgh linen in the Mountain Mist colorway by Silk Weaver. I just, I love her. The, uh, the shading is just wonderful in this design. And she was finished a while back. Let's see, according to my signature, 2013. But um, I want to stitch at least another um, one of these patterns in this set before I, I frame them. I have like 10 of them, and I'll probably, I probably won't stitch them all, but uh, I would like to stitch. I think the next one I stitch will be uh, the Elderberry Fairy, and I will insert a pic of that pattern. And then I have a few like nautical style ones that I did. So this is... The uh, Dimensions Petite Kit called, um, let me see, what my note it is called Strawn 18 Count Ada, and it is called Voyage at Sea. 
so this one is uh, it's pretty cool, very detailed. It's dimensional because the, the border is like a, a rope that uh, you create and then attach by couching. And I'm, I'm pretty proud of that little knot there at the bottom. <laughs> it took a while to make look perfect, but I'm happy with it now. So the one I did to go with it is Beacon at Daybreak. Lighthouse, another Dimensions Petite kit on 18 uh, Ada. So I finished this one in 2015. And this one was a pretty easy stitch, easier than the other one. Like the, the Voyage at Sea, the ship was like a lot of like stitching with three or four threads. And on 18 count Ada, that's kind of hard. <laughs> so this one involved a lot of half cross for the sky. So once I finished with the, the lighthouse and the, the garden area, the the rest of the, the uh, pattern worked up really quick. So I am planning to uh, frame these two in, uh, oops, in a similar manner and then hang them together in my uh, guest bathroom. So they're, they're kind of different color schemes, but they are similar themes and I think I can make it work. So I don't have the frame yet. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> so I have a few uh, Halloween patterns that I intend to frame this year. I do have framing materials for them, but I uh, haven't got around to doing it yet because, you know, it's not Halloween. <laughs> so this one is Halloween Happiness by Imaginating. And it's on... 32 opalescent belfast in the treasure trove colorway by silk weaver old and this pattern was just so much fun to stitch all the little elements and there's nothing fussy in it no fractionals like a little bit of back stitching not too much and all these cool little motifs so it says creepy crawly tricky treaty ghostly ghouly scary spooky funky freaky squirmy squishy and hazy crazy so I really like this and uh, you'll see it in a few months here when I frame it for Halloween. And then my other Halloween uh, project that I finished, I finished this one, the, the Halloween Happiness back in, let's see my signature, where is it? Hmm. There it is, 13, 2013. This one I stitched last year. In 2015, it's um, the chart is by Erica Michaels. It's called um, Double Double Toil and Trouble. It's stitched on 32 Shadowbrook Belfast by uh, Silk Weaver. And this one is charted for Weeks Dye Works. And I didn't want to buy all the Weeks because, well, I'm cheap, I guess. <laughs> but it became apparent to me that I was going to have to buy some of them because. The way the pattern is, it just it wouldn't come out right if you used all DMC. So I use some DMC and some weeks, and there's a little smattering of beads on there, like the eyes of the critters. This one has some specialty stitches. You can see like um, this one, like the little green thing there. That's like a rosette, and there's Smyrna crosses in here. And some of them were kind of hard to execute, like the Smyrna crosses. Like the these worms in the bottom border there, they're all Smyrna crosses. And that was just kind of hard because there's a lot of floss in that area. So might have been a little bit easier if I used 28 fabric. And my favorite detail in this is the, uh, the spider web. And it says, eek boo. <laughs> so I love that. And I do have a frame for this one too, planning to frame it this year. I'm going to use a double mat on this one. I think purple and orange, but uh, I have to work it out. We'll see. So that's it. Those are all my finishes to be framed. And so next time I'll do like a whip update and hopefully I'll have a couple finishes, Celtic. Christmas and Midsummer Night's Dream are very close. So, and maybe I'll do another tag. 
So thanks for watching, and again, thank you to everybody who commented and subscribed. It was just so wonderful to read all your comments. You guys were so nice and, and lovely. So it's wonderful to be a, a floss tuber. So take care. Happy stitching. Bye.